In this video, we're going to discuss five common drug side effects from taking antipsychotic medication. And these are side effects we definitely want to know as a psych nurse or as a patient taking antipsychotic medication. I'm also going to be sharing a tip on how to remember these side effects. These side effects are very broad and they occur more or less with all antipsychotic medication. Before we discuss these side effects, here are some examples of antipsychotic medications like Prexa, Clozeril, Thorazine, Haldol, and Vega, Geodon, and Abilify. There are, of course, many more. I just wanted to give you a few examples in case you're wondering what some names of some antipsychotic medications were. Also, some of these side effects I would simply consider as effects of the medications because they happen frequently and are, to some degree, expected effects. As we cover these side effects, I want us to pretend as though we're experiencing some of these side effects on our own. This will help us remember the effects as well as empathize towards those who are forced to take these medication. Also, these side effects are in no particular order. So if I name the first side effect, it doesn't mean it happens more frequently than the second. So the first common side effect of psychiatric medication is sedation. These medications knock people on their butt. I have a buddy who, in the name of science and experimentation and to better understand the effects of what his patients were experiencing, decided to experimentally take a starting dose of Zyprexa, which is a very common antipsychotic use today. And he said he was out the whole day. He doesn't have a mental illness. He's not diagnosed with a mental illness. He just took this medication to see what would happen. And although he only took five milligrams of the medication, it's common to see patients on 10, 15, 20, even 30 milligrams a day. So you can imagine how sedated those patients might feel if five milligrams had such a profound effect on my friend. So we often use the term antipsychotic to describe these medications, but they used to be they used to be referred to as major tranquilizers by medical research back in the 1950s when they were first discovered. And that's because antipsychotics do just that. They tranquilize, they put people to sleep, they knock people out. It's also why some people view antipsychotics as a chemical restraint because the sedation is so powerful, it chemically immobilizes them. I've seen patients who were wildly energetic on admission units. They might be bouncing around the day hall, jumping up and down on couch on couches, cussing at staff. They might be red in the face. They're so frustrated. They're completely manic. And if they receive, say, an injection of 10 milligrams of Zyprexa, they are snowed. They are sleeping the entire next day after their injection. That's how powerful these medications are. They will put anyone, no matter their size, no matter their strength, no matter their energy level to sleep. You could take a six foot four NFL linebacker who weighs 350 pounds, and if he received 10 milligrams of Zyprexa intramuscularly, he will be asleep within 20 minutes, guaranteed promise. So that's the first effect of antipsychotics. They are very sedating. The second effect of, or the second side effect of antipsychotics is constipation. We're talking, I'm not just talking about like a little bit of constipation here. We're talking about severe, potentially life threatening constipation. This is pretty much the reason why anyone who's taking an antipsychotic is on some sort of laxative, whether it's colase, Miralax, magnesium supplements, whatever. Antipsychotics often cause horrible constipation. I've seen patients admitted to the ER because they hadn't had a bowel movement in a few days and were severely impacted. Sometimes these patients require surgical removal of the feces, and often the feces is described as clay or brick-like by those witnessing its removal. That's how bad their constipation has become. And you sometimes see patients on colostomy bags because they had a portion of their intestine removed due to the constipation. Antipsychotics are notorious for causing constipation, and the worst offender by far is clozapine. Clozapine causes terrible, terrible constipation, and without routine Miralax, most patients could not safely take this medication. So side effect number two is constipation. I almost feel like throwing in a story about my own experience with constipation once when I was 19, which was many years ago. And I think I'll leave it out of this video, but if someone wants to hear it, leave a comment below, I'll make a video about it. All I know is that after having one terrible experience with constipation, I can completely relate to my patients and I'm like, sweet mother of God, we need to prevent constipation. And it's one of those things, we like. I look back at my own 
experience and I can sort of laugh at it because it's funny to me. But if you're taking this medication, which causes incredible amounts of constipation, I can also see how good constipation is. It's no laughing matter. The third common side effect of antipsychotics is weight gain. I've seen numerous patients gain a pound a day. That's not, I'm not exaggerating here, a pound a day for an average of about 60 to 90 days. If we do the math, those patients are gaining 60 to 90 pounds in a two to three month period. 60 to 90 pounds in a two to month, in a two to three month period. That's crazy, that's crazy. They gain so much weight, they become unrecognizable. I distinctly remember a female patient being put on Zyprexa involuntarily while she was on an admission unit. I hadn't seen her for a few months because I was working on the float pool. And then I floated to her unit. And after we did the report in the morning, I thought to myself, man, this patient, this name looks really familiar to me, but I don't remember her face. And then halfway through my shift, I realized it was the same gal I had worked with some months prior, but I hadn't recognized her because she had gained so much weight. It's really, really tragic. And you can imagine what it does to people's self-esteem when they look into the mirror and they can't recognize themselves because they gained so much weight. So that's when I say, when we're going through this video, imagine the effects happen to you. Imagine you gained a pound a day for two months. I mean, it just, it would, I don't even know, I don't even really know how to imagine it because it's so much weight. It is so much weight. And it would just, for me, I would be like, holy cow, what's going on? Why do I look this? I mean, I, who knows what the flurry of thoughts we might have if we gained a pound a day. By the way, if you are finding this video helpful or if you've learned about a side effect or two, please hit that subscribe button and hit the like button and click the bell so you can be the first person to watch my next video. The fourth common side effect of antipsychotics is involuntary movement disorders. Involuntary movement disorders. A huge percentage of people taking antipsychotics for more than a few years are going to develop involuntary movement disorders. And the last time I checked, the meta-analyses of long-range studies that follow people for many, many years on antipsychotic medication, I think it might be as high as 50% of people de develop some sort of involuntary movement disorder. Sometimes these develop, sometimes they develop, these movement disorders will develop fast, and other times it takes years before movement develops are noticeable. Usually with my patients, I will notice the movements in the form of a gentle rocking, and this this can either be sitting or standing. So it kind of looks like this. It might just be sort of rocking back and forth. It's probably hard to see on screen, I just realized. And also, these involuntary movements also happen to the face a lot and the jaw. So you might see one, you might see someone move their jaw around like this. And it can, it can even be a little more subtle than that. I'm not, yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. I have to look over at my screen to make sure I'm capturing it right. But, and then sometimes you might see their tongue protrude or have an involuntary movement itself and it might look something like this. It's also common for patients to develop involuntary movements in the form of tremors and we usually see these first in the hands so it will look something like this. Like a little tremor like this or you might get kind of pill rolling that kind of looks um, like this with their hand. Also, there's some older research that suggests the typical antipsychotics like Thorazine and Haldol, these are the older ones, were more likely to cause involuntary movement disorders. But newer research suge suggests, I'm having a hard time talking now, I feel like my tongue is all messed up. Newer research suggests movement disorders are occurring at about the same rate with the atypical antipsychotics like Zyprexa, Seroquel, and Clozaril. And one hospital I worked at really loved using Zyprexa, and I saw a number of patients develop movement disorders from this medication alone. So the good news is, is that if you stop the offending medication, the movement disorder will typically go away. The bad news is the medications are rarely stopped and providers usually believe the benefits of the medication outweigh the risk or outweigh the movement disorders themselves. Again, I think it's important when describing these side effects, we keep in mind the patient, have to think about the patient. How would you feel if you gained a lot of weight? Or how would you feel if you were to look into the mirror and you noticed your face moving around uncontrollably? What would that do to your sense of self? And how might that affect your self-esteem? Self so pause a bit here, maybe pause the video and really think about, geez, I, one day I look in the mirror and all of a sudden I notice this 
this bizarre facial movement, how would that affect you? Before we cover the final side effect, I want I want your thoughts on these side effects, some of these side effects we've already discussed. What are what are your initial reactions? Have you yourself had to take any of these medications? And if so, what was your experience? I'm really curious to hear what your opinion is, so please leave a comment below. All right, let's talk about the fifth and last common side effect of antipsychotic medication, which is restlessness, also known as akathisia. This one might seem a little counterintuitive given the sedative nature of antipsychotics, but for whatever reason, a handful of patients will develop restlessness. When a patient is restless, they have this unrelenting urge to move around. They have difficulty sitting, they have difficulty sitting still, they have difficulty just standing, and it's really an unpleasant experience. The way I've heard it described is you you kind of always want to move, kind of like when you're feeling antsy or anxious to do something and you need to get up and move. It's like that, but it's amplified and it's persistent. It makes sleeping really difficult. It's very, very irritating. So just, just imagine feeling that way and you can't actually resolve it. So when we feel antsy and we get up and we move around, it resolves. But when these people do that, it doesn't. It just, it's there. It helps. It alleviates it, but it never goes away. So there, it, it can be so severe. Some people commit suicide because of it. And it often forces patients to pace constantly. I've seen patients walk, and this is not hyperbole. I've seen pac- patients walk 10 plus miles a day back and forth in a hospital hallway because of their akathisia, because of the medication. They are going to do this until they die or until their heart gives up on them or until they are no longer able to walk. And from from what, from what my patients have reported to me, pacing helps alleviate the akathisia, but it never ever goes away. This is another side effect that can go away if the medication is stopped, but it's not guaranteed. So if you take the medication for a very long time and you experience and you experience akathisia for a very long time, if you stop the medication, it's somewhat unlikely that your akathisia will go away. So imagine just having permanent restlessness, permanent restlessness. All right, so those are our five common side effects of antipsychotic medications. The first we covered was sedation. The second was constipation. The third was weight gain. The fourth was involuntary movement disorders. And the fifth was restlessness. Hopefully we can see how detrimental these drugs can be and how dangerous they potentially are. This is why they must be prescribed very carefully and with lots of monitoring. I hope you found this video helpful. Please give it a like so it has a chance to be pushed by the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe and I'll see you on my next video.